welcome everyone to today's uh, MARA guest lecture. And our presenter today is one of our favorite people because she's a MARA graduate. Uh, Amber Crumweed has been in the records management profession for, for over 10 years. And she's active in the Puget Sound chapter of Armour International. Always a good thing to be active in your professional organization. And she's a certified records manager and also a certified paralegal. Uh, her professional work has been in the private sector where she's developed and supplemented records programs which manage several dozen record types across multiple lines of business in various office locations. And Amber is going to speak to us today about her career path, how I got here, the career path of a corporate records manager. So right now I'll turn the mic over to Amber. Thank you, Pat. And I would also like to welcome everyone who's attending this presentation today and um, those of you who will be listening to this recording. Um, I'd like to thank SJSU Sliss Colloquium for the opportunity to share my career path experience and hope it might provide some insight into one of the many avenues um, a records manager might take. Uh, I've hopefully left enough time at the end to fill any questions you might have, so either put them in the chat box or we can, you know, raise your hand and we can address them as we go through the presentation. So it's a pretty basic agenda. We're just going to do an introduction and then I'm just going to run through my education background, uh, the work experience I've had in the records management field, then my MAR experience, and close out with some professional development areas that um, I've been afforded because of my involvement in MARA and in with um, Army International too. So, so I've done the welcome. Uh, again, welcome everyone. I hope you find this interesting. So I hold an undergraduate degree, my BA, is in organizational management. It's a, was a basic baseline business degree because at that time I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to be when I grew up. And I hold a, the Master's in Archives Administration from San Jose, graduated last May. I'm also a certified records manager and a certified paralegal. The CRM designation came in 2005 and the paralegal certification came in 2008. The BA pr uh, that I d earned was through a, an accelerated degree program that had been designed at that time for working adults. And at the time of my entrance, I was three years younger than the minimum age requirement to um, be accepted, but through a combination of many college credits over the earned in the two years prior to my admission. I also had to put together a professional declaration essay and had to secure multiple recommendations from uh, professors and other business owners to support my application process. And because of that, I was admitted into the program. So it was my first experience with an alternate uh, degree program. It was not as technically advanced as the MARA program. The Warner degree was not your typical bachelor's as it was geared towards working adults and classes were only at night and on Saturdays. And since the classes were held in satellite locations, the only time I was ever actually on that campus was when I graduated, which is very similar to my MAR experience as the first time I was on that campus was when I also graduated last May. So it's been interesting that my educational career has not been the typical brick and mortar um, structure, no dorms, that sort of thing. So finding MARA was fit right into um, what I had done in the past. So that is So my work experience as the 
bio stated, my entire career has been in the private sector. My husband was in the Navy and we had moved out here to Washington State, where we live currently still, in the late 1990s. And the transfer came, uh, we moved from Florida to Washington State before I had um, completely finished all of the elective credits. So I had a few more credits to complete. So when I moved out here, I accepted a part-time temporary position with a timber management company. And my position was as the assistant to the land records manager for the company. And I believe that it's what truly put records management in my brain as even a, a job direction. Um, and it also gave me the desire to seek out a more formal education in this, um, in, the, in the industry. I've heard many of my colleagues state that most of us came into this profession by accident. Um, I don't think anyone that I know of has actually set out and, and when they began their career path, this is what they wanted to be. This is usually a secondary position that uh, you're in and you become interested in and have a desire and, and an ability to comprehend it. So then you move into those, those positions. So I kind of think I have to credit my third grade teacher, though, for laying the, the foundation for my organization, organizational instincts as she would keep me after school many times to teach me uh, structure and classification. And, and I believe that this was probably so that all of my homework assignments would be returned in the correct order and in one piece so that she could grade them. Um, I think what it did is gave me a foundation of being able to categorize, compartmentalize, and to group pieces of information. Because since then, it's a little bit OCD here at my house. So, um, being a Navy wife, I got a lot of opportunities to exercise these records management skills that I didn't know that I had um, by helping fellow, fellow sailors pack when they uh, were transferred to other boats. And it kind of became known around my husband's boat that if you wanted to make sure that all of your stuff made it in the single moving truck that you had rented, then you needed to um, invite James and his wife. And the split of labor was is that James was the, the workhorse and I just got to stand on the truck and tell people what to do, which is always fun. So I'm not suggesting that packing moving trucks is a prerequisite for becoming records managers, but what I think it reinforced was the ability to visualize how items can be grouped and how they relate to other items or big Tetris game. Um, Seeing these kind of connections has helped me to design classification systems. Classification systems. No. Um, and to cross-reference items, which aid users in finding related content without having to reorganize or physically move items. Um, when I perform research now within my organization, I kind of feel like Hansel and Gretel a little bit as I follow little cross-reference breadcrumbs to discover necessary files and bits of information that um, users need to perform their business functions. Someone has a word that they're looking for and you grab onto that and then it leads you down this other little rabbit hole and, and eventually you find the needle in the haystacks that um, people need. So that is always fun to do that. But my time with the, the land manager back at the timber company, it started out as a, a simple, it was a part-time temporary position to just do data entry into a land contract 
database that had been uh, built by him to manage all of the real property, um, tree farm property contacts that they, um, that they owned and managed. He was very eager, I think because he was getting tired of maintaining it himself, but he was very eager and supportive of me learning not only how the system was designed or what its initial purpose was for, but encouraged me to further investigate how to make it better to improve on the structure. So it was it was very nice to be able to have someone that says, here's a, a framework and this kind of works, but if you see a way to make it better, then go for it and, and do it. So when I finished the extra elective credits for my bachelor's, they offered me a, a full-time position at the timber company and the, the land manager, he was just, absolutely wonderful. He even threw me a, a mini graduation, seeing as the, the college campus was in Florida, he threw me a, a graduation with cap, gown, cake, everything in the office. So it was, it was really, really nice. Um, he was also the one that encouraged me to, um, to join ARMA and to pursue the certified records manager designation. When, at that time, as I was being asked to perform under his, you know, his tutelage and his direction functions from a records program, I began to realize that I probably needed to try to find some formal educational resource or program to supplement and support um, what it is I was ending up in, in doing for the company. And at that time, the programs that I found were either focused on heavily on archives or on a librarian focus, which wasn't what I was doing in my day-to-day -day management with the land records program at the, at the timber company. Um, he eventually uh, transferred his ARMA membership into my name. Once again, I, I think because he just, he was getting tired of participating. Um, so it wasn't really until I started getting involved in ARMA that I had received some of that formal official training on records management principles. So at that time, I also was learning another set of skills at the timber company, and that was in the paralegal realm. And those are regarding the, the land transactions that the timber company was involved in. So once again, I was performing certain corporate duties and functions, and I, and I really felt that I needed to have some kind of a, an educational um, basis on which I was performing these works. And so at the same time of finding resources for records management training, I also was looking for paralegal um, support and, and training and education there too. And as I, I moved through both of those cycles early on, I was very excited to find that some of the skills and um, knowledge that I was gaining were, were transferable between the, the records management functions and then the paralegal functions that I was performing. The biggest thing that I found uh, was the ability as my legal training was developing, it gave me a better insight and ability to read laws and regulations which are can be circular in themselves and cryptic and um, so that gave me a skill to be able to read those laws, regulations, to come up with um, appropriate retention periods for records content. Yes, compliance. I mean, they, those laws are, you almost need, you need an, almost need an interpreter sometimes. So having that other skill was then something I didn't have to push down more to our legal team, which made the company happy because I, I got paid a lot less than the legal team did. So being able to 
show that value has also been um, has been fun. So in 2004, the um, land records manager um, passed away, um, and that was just it was a huge blow. But uh, so I assumed his duties completely at that point and became also the key contact for all land transactions. So it was uh, a loss of a, of a mentor and then a, um, a, a benefit that at such a young age, I guess, I was now responsible for such a large and, you know, intricate program. So between the, the bachelor's degree and the now <laughs> total responsibility for uh, the records program, it gave me the um, necessary requirements to sit for the ICRM's certified records manager exam um, as there's a education and experience, you know, levels that you have to meet to be able to, to take that exam. So I got that pretty quickly. It was, you know, trial by fire. So <laughs> um, I had to retake part one a couple of times and it made me upset, but I finally made, made it through it and um, got that, that designation. But it was kind of sad as the, um, the, the one person that had set me on and, and encouraged and supported that, um, that designation um, wasn't there to see me finish the journey. I I can't tell you how great I, his support even to this you know this day. I still can hear him in my head sometimes, and I just think that having a professional mentor is a gift that not many records professionals receive. And if you do have one or find one, it will greatly, greatly enrich your professional career. So um, I, I, I really miss his, um, his, his training and guidance. But so at the end, I spent about seven years at the timber company. And in 2006, after spending time focusing on both records management and the paralegal functions, I thought I needed to, you know, Master, you know, jack of all trades, but master of none was kind of what my world at the timber company was was becoming, and I and I really wanted to focus. So I had put out the the good vibes into the world on both of those lines of um, professional interest, and it just so happened that a real estate investment firm um, here in Sumner. I live in Bonnie Lake, so Sumner is just a skip down the hill for me had just created a new corporate records management position and they were more than willing to um, take a chance on a on a very very vocal young <laughs> recently uh, certified records manager um, so they didn't know what they were getting into and I didn't know what I was getting into so it was a perfect relationship but um, unlike the timber company that had a a, a program that was functioning and it was basic, yes, but it it still had, the skeleton was already there. Coming into this new firm, there was, it, there was pretty much nothing. And so it's allowed me to gain the experience of designing, building, maintaining a records program from the ground up and has been a truly learning, learning experience and um, it's, it's been, I think it's been a great relationship for the company and myself. They um, didn't know what they didn't need and they now have what they have and, and I've learned a lot through the, through the process. So, so as a, the corporate records manager, I am responsible for maintaining our company's entire filing structure, everything. Um, I'm slowly being tasked with electronic files as well and email management, but in the beginning it was everything, physical, paper, maps, disks, uh, product binders, just a varied um, 
array of information. And when I took over the position, the way that they had been managing their content was through the use of Word files. And they had one Word file for every um, entity that they owned, managed property investments for, which now is about 225. So, and they were all like bullet point lists and it was just file names. There was nothing, nothing else besides the name of a file. So it was correspondence 2003. Um, so I, one of my very first duties there was to get the, that file structure out of Word files and actually into a database. So I took the experience of database design and management that I had gained at the Timber Company and I had actually created a records management file database for the company. And I did it that way because one, I had never gone out and evaluated software before and creating databases was something that I was very comfortable with. But I think it also helps the users and the company see the benefit of a formal records software, piece of software, because they saw the, the improvement of information and access from the Word files to the database that I had built and were happy with that enough to give me the the budget and the ability to go out and find a, a you know, a formal out of the box kind of records management product. So after many months of searching and doing demos and having user testing forums, which once again, I, I learned a lot of things and um, getting user input is very important. I have learned over the years that now you need to um, be very specific <laughs> in what you want your users to report back on. Otherwise, there's just this flood of, I don't like it, but I don't know why, don't ask me, um, unusable feedback. So it has been a, and that was an interesting process as well as learning how to communicate what an end user would be seeing now and how to get them to see that from a demo when I myself hadn't seen it work either. But we decided on a program and we've had, a, had this program up and running since 2007 and it's, um, it's called FileTrail and it's a software for physical files and it was totally cost configurable to meet our needs. Because at, as I said, we have several hundred, I think we're now, like I said, 225 plus or minus active entities that we manage information for. And the nature of our business is such that at the end of the day, there's about 200 different record series of information that um, can be created because we just have that many different lines of business within our organization. So um, being able to configure a system to meet that flexibility was, was very important. At this position, I'm also responsible for training, for continuing education, for database troubleshooting, um, doing some of the, a lot of the, when new users are brought on, the, um, our IT department adds them to the Active Directory and um, company networks. But then once they get into FileTrail, I'm the one that's in the back end um, managing the permissions and the access and who can see what, when, and, and, and how. So that has also been fun learning too. So being a department of one for this 
a large company, large small company, um, has allowed me the opportunity to gain lots of experience, a lot of hands-on experience managing all facets of a records management program. One of the interesting ones that um, I I inherited when I started was their the company's archives. And what they had and, and still what we still have is just an inactive storage protocol for management of information that no longer has any day-to-day -day needs or functions, but that we need to maintain for legal or fiscal or um, even some of them is, is uh, just a company historical thing, but it's not an, it's not an archive. Um, I've tried over the years to get people to stop calling it the archives, but I've kind of given up that ghost in favor of them <laughs> understanding <laughs> other record management functions better. So, picking my battles. But when I started, there was about 1,100 boxes, and they were in on, they were on, you know, record center shelving in a, in a warehouse that was attached to our main office location. And originally, all of the boxes were organized alphabetically by the name of the entity that owned them. Going back, we have to 25 plus entities. So everything was in alphabetic order, which made it easy early on when they, A, were a smaller company and didn't have as many entities um, and weren't creating as many records to maintain. And having them alphabetic actually was helpful for the company to be able to access the information because there doesn't need, there didn't need to be any other um, system or key or reference point in order for individuals to locate what they were looking for. Users would simply just go to the um, area in the space in the warehouse where that entity's boxes were located and they would read a few minutes on the box labels to find their box. However, on the maintenance side, as the company grew and more content was being created was just very, very tedious for me to have to maintain. Since all of the boxes were in alphabetic order, whenever something new was added, it required the entire um, volume of records or boxes to sometimes be completely shifted and moved to, um, in order to keep all of the boxes together. And I, very quickly grew tired of moving boxes. <laughs> so um, with the help of some Armour International resources and speaking with vendor um, representatives, I um, developed a, a, what I call at, this, at the office is an addressing system, which allowed boxes to be added or shelved in any open space within the, the warehouse and without regard to does this fit alphabetically. And the way I would, you know, explain it to people is that everyone, you know, you, your house has an address, this box now has an address so that you can find it, it later. The upside was that I didn't have to move a lot of boxes all the time, but the, the downside was that users now had to have that intermediary um, reference resource to be able to access their information. No longer could they just go to an alphabetic area and find their boxes. They now had to look through the list and then find the, the address. And it, it took a while for some of the um, longer term employees of the company to get used to the new system. But Eventually, users actually came to like the process better since the um, reference system that was created through FileTrail, it gave the user more information about the box itself. So now they didn't have to go and pull and read 10, 12 different box labels. They could search the system and find the box that most um, closely fit what they were looking for, and that reduced, you know, their their time to access that information. So eventually, 
they, a lot of them liked it. I mean, people still <laughs> complain, but that's, you know, that's going to be what it is. But as our company continued to grow, we needed that warehouse space for other business functions. And so we had relocated the record center, what I had renamed uh, from the archives is the, to the record center, and moved it to another owned off-site warehouse location. Um, I was still the primary person of managing that system. I still was in charge of having to go and, and help people pull files and pull boxes and then the, you know, the annual shelving of, of information. So it was quickly becoming a, um, a lot of my, um, much of my workload managing the record center. So I had started to suggest that there are better ways to do this, like hiring a third-party vendor to, to do this management for us. And it wasn't until Thanksgiving um, 2010 that um, I actually got some, um, some meat behind my suggestion. And that was because our, the space that was being used was a mixed-use building. So it had a living space. Um, above the warehouse, and that uh, Thanksgiving, the water pipes of the household unit above froze and burst, and so I, when I was called and to um, come to the record center, I walked in and saw an indoor swimming pool around all my paper and boxes. So I was standing in two inches of water and listening to the sound of rain as the ceiling, you know, leaked water all over the record center. So um, the good thing was is that it was snowing then too. Um, so the cold weather actually helped in our favor um, as it helped to mitigate any additional like damage from mold or um, deterioration. But there was a, a lot of wet, wet boxes. So I called in the, uh, the other, I called in some professionals. They were from Munters. I think they're now called Polygon. And they are document restoration professionals. And I think after about 10 hours of working with six crewmen from my um, company and two from Munters, about a third of the boxes were loaded to be taken to Chicago for restoration. Another third were loaded into a rented U-Haul truck and taken to another dry storage location. And then the last third were covered with tarps inside the, the damaged record center. So um, the BC plan, Lisa, that was, that was pretty much it. I just called Munters. <laughs> um, this goes back to being new in the position, that wasn't even one of the the things that had entered my my thinking. I, I didn't like the fact that there was a living unit above it. I knew that that cost could be something, but I never put any official thing into plan. So thankfully after that, they were more than happy to sign off on <laughs> the transfer of all those boxes to a, a third part, you know, an offsite vendor because that uh, the total cost of that incident for us was about over seventy five thousand dollars at the at the end when everything was said and done, and um, seventy five percent of that was in restoring the the boxes that were that were sent away. So um, I've had a lot of on the job stuff. So a more recent and drier work project um, being brought in and on is the development of our company's. SharePoint team sites, and I'm trying to tap into my um, knowledge of the organizational system for our physical files um, to develop how the content on our SharePoint sites will be managed and, and um, maintained or maintained and created, that sort of thing. Our physical files are pretty much 
I, I, I would say I'm, I'm pretty confident that our physical file system could withstand any kind of uh, legal, regulatory, industry, litigation, audit, and you'd be able to, to find what you needed when you needed it and it be current, accurate information. And that has a lot to do with that the makers of the files um, and the user of the files are, are typically close together. So if we have an open file plan system, that means that any employee that needs access to the information doesn't have to uh, request access. Everyone just knows where things are stored. But the nature of how our offices have been set up, pretty much those who are responsible for the content are the usually the only ones that really have easy access to the information. So just by location, our physical files are pretty accurate and, and reliable. Unfortunately, you know, electronic files, they don't work this, the same way unless you um, restrict access to file folders or parts of your shared work, work environment. And so the users are not as confident that an electronic version of a, um, of a file would, is, is as reliable as being able to go and pick up that physical one just by the nature that more people can access the electronic version. So that's been kind of a challenge in getting people to stop hoarding their own electronic versions of information and become more comfortable with um, collaboration and understanding the the track changes and that still um, that that still to be able to to pull it up and know that what you're seeing is is a is an accurate and correct version. So um, trying to get people comfortable and create those systems and policies to um, not let just that there's actually a purpose for changing an electronic file so people understand that this is, you know, an accurate version. So financial audits still require everything in hard copy. Yes, and this is in the case of not, we're not replacing our hard files. We are just trying to reduce the amount of um, duplication that happens with the electronic versions of our hard copy files so that we have a lot more control over where information, that we know that when we say, yeah, we've, looked, we've searched all of our hard drives and this is the only versions we have, uh, I can be confident and say that. So right now I don't have that confidence that I could tell you that, yes, I've searched all my file, you know, our company, and these are the only electronic versions of something. So that's, what my my focus is right now is is not a replacement of our physical files, but just a more streamlined and reliable um, use of those files. So if that makes any sense. Any other questions on that? Oh, integrity. Yes, the integrity. Maintain the integrity because the integrity of the the physical files is um, is sound. Uh, I'm bragging a little bit, but I think it's really good. But um, I don't think the integrity of our electronic files is there yet. So that's what we're hoping we can um, improve upon with the, the SharePoint development. So any other questions? Then I'm going to move on to one question. my, my Mars. Amber, there is one question there. So, it was around 2009 that I began to seek out um, some more educational opportunities. I had spent, um, at that point, it was about eight, nine years, you know, in the profession, but still never having a real records management. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Um, Kate, you had a question? Curious if you had experience with SharePoint prior to current job. No, <laughs> no, um, it has, it's been, it's been interesting 
the whole SharePoint um, conversion. The, um, it started off as being an IT project, and once the multiple and variously detailed switches in the back end were all initiated, then it was time to go out and say, what do you want the SharePoint site to do? And it was at that point that I was brought in because then it had more of a content usage focus and not a permissions, yes, no, turning something on, having the right software hardware that the IT um, team, that's their knowledge. And so it's been interesting because I've had to learn how SharePoint calls things. So once again, we're learning a new vocabulary and trying to bring those terms into what um, employees would be able to relate to easier, but still trying to say, okay, this is a new verbiage that's not completely ignore it and not try to learn it, um, but still trying to make it understandable for across the site. I think SharePoint can do a lot of things. Um, it, it seems to do some of it out of the box pretty, pretty easily once you, once you learn what things are called and what their main purpose is for. Um, but it can, it just, it's just so, it's such a blank canvas that it's been difficult going to our departments and saying, well, what do you want on a shared space when they've never had any kind of a collaborative software or any kind of a, a, an interface like this before and saying, well, what do you want? Their next question to us is, well, what do you have? So, and then we go back, we can have whatever you want, but what do you have? And so it's this, this circular question of um, it, it can do a lot of stuff, but it's not, um, there isn't a lot of um, examples because it really can do different things for different people. So I've tried to, as I'm learning more about the configurability of SharePoint, I've been trying to say to individuals is what kind of usage do you want? And then from there, building them a temporary or a basic site structure um, so that they can see um, what it would look like. And then um, going from there and making changes and modifications as users start actually using the system because we all know that what people want and what they do are two different things sometimes. So, but at least we'll get it started. So, um, the cultural shift occurred. Um, yes, and that was um, something I didn't find out until um, a couple of years into the position that it wasn't, um, I guess the, the cultural shift wasn't necessarily that they all were trying to embrace it. It was more of a, from a top management, this position will be created and you will work with her and you will like her and um, that's it. So um, unfortunately, I came in as um, a very eager person to learn and coming in with the expectation that everyone was just thrilled to have me in their workspace and just could not wait for the, you know, the wonderful things of butterflies that I could bring them. And that wasn't really the case. A lot of people were um, very suspicious of me. I found out later that they thought maybe I was into coming in to um, reduce staffing. Um, because a lot of the questions I was asking is, what do you do? How do you do it? Um, who do you work with? And because I was looking at it from a business process standpoint, so I could figure out how to build a system, who talks to who and why. And that wasn't, uh, they were looking at it from a completely different direction. So um, unfortunately, that, that was just something that age, I, I just didn't have that experience to be able to, um, to know that ahead of time. So. Um, Yes, system questions do make people defensive. It's, why do you why do you want to know how I do it? I do it I do it very well, thank you. So, <laughs> um, but it was it's been a learning experience, and um, I've grown a, I've grown a lot that way as well. I'm still enthusiastic about it, 
um, but people don't cringe <laughs> when I walk into a room now. Um, so that's, that's always nice. But it took about four years to get there. So um, anyhow. Um, so my law experience, it was in 2009. I was trying to find some more um, actual um, educational programs, and everything that I was finding just didn't seem to fit. And I'm not sure if I ran into Pat at um, an ARM International Conference or I had seen the website first. But either way, when I when I began to investigate it, and I I was just um, I was just very, very, it was probably simultaneously something like that, but it was just, it was like lights from heaven or something, and um, it just was a nice perspective, because at that time, I had also considered making the switch from records management to archives, because I kind of like history, and I like the, you know, the investigation and of and preservation of information and, and just artifacts and stuff like that. So. Finding the MARA program that provided a dual focus was just, it, it just was exactly what I was looking for. And I believe that this is the program gave a very good balance between the two facets of information management. Um, I also really enjoyed being part of the second cohort to participate in the program, as it possibly, you know, my input could change, you know, an educational program that would influence generations to come. So that was, um, also very, um, a little bonus caveat too. The confidence to take on the new projects that I am at work has come from my interactions with Mara. Um, being in and having been in the industry for many years before getting formal education, coming in tomorrow, I was really kind of hoping that um, I was doing stuff right, and so the program really gave me a lot of um, validation of what I had what I had thought I knew. It was it was right, and it was lovely to see that um, that I had learned something in the trenches. So um, that was just it was just very 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 um, very fulfilling being part of the MARA program. Um, I love the online learning environment. Um, it became very, very key as shortly after um, being accepted and starting the program, I had a pretty major life changing event and had I had to physically go to a campus or um, meet someone else's um, school timeline, having to travel somewhere, I, I would have had to uh, resign from the program because I just, it, it just was not going to be possible that time. So I really enjoyed my internship. I was able to um, work with Cisco Systems in San Jose. Um, at first I was hesitant. I'd never done a internship before and thought it was for um, people who didn't have any or little um, job experience, which, which wasn't my case. So going into it, I was kind of, um, mm, I'm not sure what this is like, but um, it really gave me the ability to see someone else's records program from the inside that I was able to take and put pieces and upgrade my, my company's one program. So, and then, of course, you know, graduation, I, I love this. This is a, a cohort, fellow cohort of mine. She posted these on um, her, her Facebook page, and so I just had to include those as well. For all of those of you who are starting or not quite done yet, you too can have one of these someday. So um, I look like I'm running out of time. I'm going to quickly go through this, the professional development. I've been doing a lot in study member of Arm International since about 2000, and it was a, a key um, key to being able to interact with other professionals. Um, as sometimes training can be a bit technical and theoretical, the ability to then discuss those concepts with people who are actually trying to implement them was something you couldn't just, you just really can't get in most, you know, sessions or an hour training or an hour educational session. So that involvement has been, has been invaluable to me. I 
have um, continued my involvement at the local level. I've been held many chapter positions from treasurer to president and back to treasurer. And I'm currently the chairman of the board and programs chair. I see Susan's logged in, and she's um, she's our uh, webmaster for mistress uh, for our chapter. So um, we're just you just got to be involved. That's where you make your you, you know your connections. So, but it also gave me the presentation presentation skills and gave me the opportunity to present and share my knowledge at regional and local levels. Um, I was able to be part of um, the project lead for um, international Army um, International Guideline about evaluating and mitigating records and information management risks. And I was able to work with a individual who I had read previous articles and books from um, and was able to co-author a, um, a chapter in a international textbook with her. So I wouldn't have been able to do that had I not had the, the international contacts. So um, it's given me the ability to, to develop presentation and leadership skills that being a department one, you don't get the opportunity to help manage a lot of people unless, of course, you, you know, just the small groups that you get to interact with when managing their systems. But on the whole, it's just it's just me. So um, I, I have enjoyed my, my time also with ARMA. So that's that's uh, that's about it. That's my life so far. Um, thank you everyone for listening and for you know allowing me to present this. If you have any other questions, um, be happy to take them now. And if you're listening to the recording, I have put my um, contact information here, and you feel free to email me or give me a call if you have any further um, questions. So thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you, Amber. That was terrific.